Hi and welcome back to Bats, Cats and Broomsticks. Today I'm going to take you through a video that's been requested in my comments from a previous video and that is how I do my mandalas. I know that I did a mandala in the beginning of my channel where I did a moon on a piece of wood where it has like a purplish background um, but I completely forgot to do the recording for the for the process of that because I never thought that that mandala was going to end up being recorded or that I was going to do anything with it really. It was just another one of my um, doodles for my peaceful mindfulness exercise. Um, so here it goes. Uh, what I do is I take my metal ruler, I find the centre of a piece of tracing paper I've layered over some printer paper and I use a protractor to make concentric circles that are random widths apart. In this video I actually measure them but they're not measured to anything, they're just measurements that I find satisfying. Um, they just let me work the depth of the mandala so that I know what I'm working to in each row of patterns um, as a bit of a guide. I don't always listen to the guide that I've drawn down either. Sometimes I just go a bit crazy and draw whatever pattern I feel like in whatever shape I feel like over the top of concentric circles I've drawn for no apparent reason. But in this video I'm going to show you um, how to how I do it properly uh, which is to draw all the circles like that and then if I want them to be uh, smaller towards the outside of the circle as well I will draw another set of um, lines to give me a guide again so that it's divided um, into eight lines instead of just the four. So once I've done that I will start drawing in random shapes, random patterns, um, depending on what pops into my mind at the time. Uh, I don't really think about it beforehand. Sometimes I go on the internet and I do some research, look up some mandala patterns that other people do to give me an idea of, of a direction that I want to take it in. But I want to state clearly that I never outright take anybody else's mandala pattern. I just look at how they draw leaves or something like that to see how I would draw the shape myself with something different in it or um, take an element of something and draw it into a pattern or some, some different kind of pattern that I've already come up with. Um, but I will never take somebody else's mandala design and claim it as my own design. Um, I do take some elements of other people's things from time to time and work them into my mandalas. My mandalas for me are about uh, mindfulness practice and not about creating a piece of art necessarily. They're about relaxing, unwinding and de-stressing yourself from the processes of life and the worries of being a perfectionist as an artist as well. So um, when I'm drawing my mandalas, I will use my Pentel pencil. This uh, pencil is the 0.5 pencil. It's the kind with the refillable lead, like a drafting pencil. And when I'm happy with the design that I've drawn, I will go over it in a fine liner. Today's fine liner is the Copic fine liner because I've kind of fallen in love with this one a little bit. It's waterproof. It has cluster crystal clear ink when it's dry, it doesn't fade and it doesn't rub away. So I quite like that bit. I found this ruler that I'm currently using at WH Smiths. It's a really really good useful ruler. It's very useful for doing mandalas with specifically because it lets you draw circles and semicircles um, without having to freehand them and freehanding semicircles is an absolute pain. So it's a useful bit of kit, but it's not an absolutely necessary one. Um, everything else I pretty much draw freehand. I don't use a guide for them. Um, I just sort of try to draw something that's a satisfying shape as far as I'm concerned. Um, I build them up 
bit by bit um, adding the layers as I go on as I think of something else to put on there um, I'm going to take this minute to tell you that none of the things that I mentioned in this video are sponsoring this video so everything that I say about them is completely my opinion and um, I do genuinely believe believe in the product or I, I do use them regularly so it is what I would use. Um, moving on from that, uh, what else do I have to say about mandalas? I suppose that I would say um, mandalas are supposed to be easy. Um, not easy to do, but not stressful is what I mean by that. I don't mean that they're supposed to be a piece of kit to draw beautiful concentric patterns that are identical to one another. Absolutely not. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. I'm saying that they're supposed to be something that is relaxing, soothing, calming and not stress inducing because all the other kind of things that I paint are a bit stressful. That's why I turn to mandalas when I'm having a hard day or if I'm having a uh, sort of mental art block type situation I tend to mandalas because they are stress-free as far as I'm concerned it takes a lot of practice to get the to get the patterns to look identical and satisfying and there are to be perfectly honest with you a lot better mandala artists than myself um, on the internet especially on uh, Instagram but maybe with practice and a good deal bit of effort I will become a really good mandala artist as well I really really enjoy making them and I'm very glad that you guys enjoy watching me make them um, I will continue to make them on this channel because they are something that I find really soothing to do um, if there's anything that you have any specific questions about or anything that you wanted a more detailed tutorial on or something like that, please let me know because um, I 100% don't mind making a video on that whatsoever. If there's anything that you want to know about art supplies wise, what I use to make my mandalas or any hints, tips, tricks or anything like that, I would be more than happy to make following follow up videos. Um, for those things as well. Um, if you like this video please click the like button it really really helps my channel grow and do subscribe to my channel because I do bring a video out every week when I can. Um, I try to make it every Monday um, and I really do appreciate all the support and every single subscriber really does matter. I do love hearing from you guys in the comments so if there's anything that you guys want to see do put a comment there I do try and read it every single one of them and let me know how you guys do your mandalas do you do your process differently to me um, is there something that you think uh, I'm missing out on something that I should consider for my next videos maybe so let's time lapse this next section up a little bit because um, I'm just working through my process and drawing up the sketch a little bit at a time. Um, so I'm just going to add a bit of music for you guys to listen to as you watch me go along. Stay mad shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me Ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back I'm sick of being cautious I'ma go cause something, can't stop this I'ma steal everybody's lane, call it shoplift Sick of hearing everyone complain when they thoughtless Taste the pain, it's like candy canes It makes me go change into a better frame Into a better name, society's insane We all live for fame, yeah Cash in the back, stadium packed Born a rock star in this life Gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad, I just wanna get caught up In this life, I'm crazy, I'm mad Do it, no cap, 
Only God wants you better go live it up, cash in the bag. Baby, I'm back. Baby, I'm back. Baby, I'm back.
So now let's work on the background portion of our mandala. We've put aside our sketch which is on our tracing paper and we're going to get the background ready. So the background today is done on a piece of watercolour paper. I'm using the Dala Rowney um, Aquafine paper for this. I'm not using the the thick one with, with like the, the, the board. Um, I'm, uh, it's just the, the thin cold pressed paper. So I'm going to be using the Kurataki watercolour palette that my friend got me for Christmas. She bought me the 36 full pan set and they are some of the most beautiful colours that I've ever used. Um, they have a unique quality and texture to them that um, is very distinctly different from using a British watercolour paint. They are very smooth and very rich and very creamy and I wanted to have a go and see what they would look like to do a background like this. I've used a lot of other colour type watercolour paints before in the past to make backgrounds for my mandala works but um, I think that this has been the most like satisfying colour wise. So what I'm going to do is take my little ceramic well and fill it up with watercolour colours and some water um, mixed and then I'm going to just dab them onto the watercolour and let the colours run and bleed as and how they please really in the hopes that I can create something reminiscent of a marbly galaxy kind of effect. Um, I'm not going for any sort of specific kind of style or design or anything like that, just a satisfying bunch of colours on a piece of paper. So the colours that I've chosen out of this palette are the number 37 purple, the number 139 cobalt violet, the number 38 imperial violet, number 66 persian blue, number 62 turquoise blue and number 61 ultramarine pale. Those are the colours that I chose to blend um, on the paper to create this marble effect in case anybody's interested in what colours I used. I am sorry if my voice keeps getting a bit quiet in this video. Um, I do have a tiny little bit of a sore throat going on so I do apologise if the sound quality seems a little bit odd or if I sound like I'm stopping and pausing at strange intervals in my words. For uh, reference I um, think that if you guys are interested in making your very own water colour background that's a bit marble effecty I recommend that you have a good look around on YouTube there are so many people making wonderful videos on it for the time being I'm not making any videos on it only because I don't have uh, what I feel is um, good enough brushes or um, a good enough technique to make a tutorial on it but should that change I will make a proper tutorial on how to give yourself a proper marble background but for the for the background that I'm doing here um, all I have is the Pro Art um, Prolong Plus I think in size 18 and 14 um, paintbrushes they are some of my favorite paintbrushes um, I've had them for the absolute longest time. They hold quite a lot of water. They're very satisfying to use and they've got a beautiful point to them even now and it's been a lot of years that I've had those for, let's see now, uh, must be going on 10 years at this point, maybe even longer, that I've had these brushes and they have kept their point so beautifully. They still hold water so well. They haven't shed their hair, they haven't come apart from their glue. I'm incredibly satisfied with how they've um, stood the test of time as a paintbrush. So highly recommend those paintbrushes. So once your watercolour page is completely, and I do mean completely dry, um, you can either use a pencil and scribble on the back of your drawing and transfer it that way. That's how I used to do it in school. 
um, or what I have found on Amazon is a carbon transfer paper they have them in graphite and in white graphite as well so I've bought the white graphite page here and that's what I've put underneath my tracing paper in with the mandala design on it so I have my watercolour page then a sheet of white graphite transfer paper and then the mandala over the top and I tape them down so that they don't move around for me and I go over the mandala in pencil so that it transfers to the page underneath. What I will say is with the white um, transfer paper it doesn't give you like a super clear super super detailed ultra bright white line to follow it is very very subtle and subdued of a line so if you find it difficult to follow something that you can barely see um, I recommend that you use an alternative method to transfer your design onto your onto your final work um, but that's the that's the um, paper that I use um, for reference I will leave a link to uh, the Amazon um, product that I purchased for you guys to have a look at in the description of this video. Once you've traced the outlines so that your pattern is on your watercolour paper underneath, uh, all I do is go over the top again on the watercolour paper, detailing out my lines really carefully, um, making sure that I take out all of the mistakes from the from the tracing um, paper that I did before. So. As you could see on my tracing paper, one of the semicircles around the outermost edge don't look like all the rest of them. So I make sure not to put that one in because that is the one that I wasn't happy with. And that is an example of why I choose to do the tracing paper method personally. Because I like to be able to do and make mistakes like that and alter it after the fact onto a finished beautiful piece so that I don't have to scrap a whole bit that I've worked ages getting the watercolours to work just right on or if I've been doing loads and loads of ink um, dripping onto uh, a piece of a page or something um, that I don't waste my time uh, working a, a, wor a working a piece of work to that kind of finish only to have it ruined by a change of mind afterwards. So that's how I do my mandala work. I hope that you guys found this video to be helpful and that uh, I've tried to include all the information that I can think of of how I do it and what I use and everything like that and I hope that it helped clear it up how I make my mandala work.
Stay mad shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast I ain't gonna take that, stay back I'll be swinging hard till the hits come in all caps I ain't gonna lay back, pray that someone's gonna help me Ain't nobody like that I ain't gonna wait, that's all fact Give me one shot and I'll never get the throne back I'm sick of being cautious I'ma go cause something, can't stop this I'ma steal everybody's lane, call the shoplift Sick of hearing everyone complain when they thoughtless Taste the pain, it's like candy canes It makes me go change into a better frame Into a better name, society's insane We all live for fame, yeah Cash in the bag, stadium pack Born a rock star in this life Gonna live it up on the attack Baby, I'm bad I just wanna get caught up in this life I'm crazy, I'm mad Do it, no cap Only God wants you better go Live it up, cash in the bag Stadium pack, baby, I'm bad Baby, I'm bad I got the cash in the bag
So the mandala design for this video was outlined um, in a 0.7mm Posca marker in white. Um, I used the 0.7 because it has this sharp tip to it that gives me nice thin lines surprisingly. Um, I do have a lot of different Posca markers and, and do tend to vary which one I use for each design but this one was the 0.7. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video today. Um, I hope that that cleared up some of the confusion about how I got to the final stage on my Moon Mandala piece. Um, I hope that you guys liked this video and until next time.